Lesson one, looking at the basics of marking out. So what you're going to need is a pencil, you're going to need your steel rule, you're going to need a tri-square, you're going to need a marking gauge, you're going to need a tenon saw, and then one of these two options for cutting, a G-clamp and cutting boards, or alternatively, one of your little sawing boards. So you're going to be following through this drawing and marking out onto a piece of basic material. First thing we always do with our material is to mark onto it what's known as the face and edge markings. So the face marking is this small, almost fish looking shape that goes across the widest section of your material. And the edge looks like almost a pair of legs. Wood, as we've been learning, has that tendency to twist and to warp. And we want to have one right angled edge that we always work against with our marking gauge and our tri-square to try and counteract the fact that wood cups and twists and warps. So what that means is any time you use any of these tools for drawing perpendicular or parallel lines, they always and only ever go up against the markings that we've got here. Next, we take a look at our drawing and it tells us as practice we're going to be marking increments 10 millimetres apart and then cutting them to a depth of 9 millimetres. The overall length of the material that we need is 120 millimetres. So take, first of all, my steel rule. That's my basic marking out tool with my pencil. Check my pencil's nice and sharp. 2H is the best. And I'm always looking to work from the very end of my rule. All the rules have increments in millimetres. So I'm finding where 120 is. I'm putting 120 against the end of my material. And I'm marking just to the edge of my material using the end of my steel rule. You'll notice that it's flat to do my marking. Then take my square. Tri-square is your general purpose marking out tool. It's got a right angle between the blade and the handle. It can be used for checking that there's right angles between joints and also for drawing perpendicular lines. That means lines at right angles to an edge. I press that up against the edge of my material, checking there's no gaps between the edge of the handle of the tri-square and the material, and I draw my line straight across. Light lines are the best. Next, I'm gonna mark down the edge of the material, so I push the square up against the face. I come now, because I want the line to go all the way around the material, so I press it up against the face and go across. And that's when we got this marked all the way around my material. It's going to be marking increments at 10 millimetres apart. I'm going to take my steel rule. I'm going to line up 10 millimetres with the end of my material and use the end of my steel rule to mark my point. Take my square, check face and edge. So pressing the square up against the edge of the material using the top edge of the square. Accuracy is the key in practical craft skills. This is a test of accuracy. We want them to be 10 millimetres apart, these markings. We want them to be cut to a depth of... 9 millimetres. That one there, that one there. Like so, all the way across. Next, how do I go about my marking to depth? Marking to depth is done with your marking gauge. Your marking gauge allows you to mark lines that are parallel to an edge. So that means they run in the same direction as the edge or face that they're marked down. The parts of your marking gauge, you've got your stock, which is this big thick part here. You've got your stem, which is this long section. You've got the little spike, which is known as the spur. And you've got the thumb screw. So in reverse, thumb screw is brass part here. Stock is this big wooden block. The stock slides up and down this long part here known as the stem. And these two sections here are known as your spurs. A marking gauge has a single spur and a mortise gauge has two. Drawing tells us that we're marking to a depth of nine millimeters. So I'm setting the distance between the stock and the little spur to nine millimeters. So tightening up my thumb screw. Minor adjustments can be done by hitting the top or the bottom of the marking gauge. Put my material into the vise so I can still see my face and my edge. What I'm looking to do is to mark a little dot at the point that I'm wanting to cut down and draw across, okay? I use two hands when I'm using my marking gauge, so thumb and finger over the stock and another thumb and finger on the spur, so I've got maximum control as I'm using this. 
and it's the lightest scratch on the material. This side, turn it round, and same again. Holding the marking gauge at a slight angle, dot to dot, and a little line. Accuracy is the absolute key with this. I've now marked out my depth on there, and what I'm looking to do is to cut. There's two possible methods I can use for cutting. First method, is for rough cutting, and that would be using this thing here known as our bench hook or our sawing board. Bench hook into the vise, tighten that up, use the side to cut from. So if I'm right handed, I'm going to cut from the right hand side of the sawing board. If I'm left handed, I'm going to cut from the left hand side of the sawing board. I'm lining up the line that I want to cut with the edge of the sawing board handle. I take my tenon, so a general purpose cutting tool for straight cutting. How am I going to cut? Tuck my thumb in, push against the sawing board, one foot in front of the other, and gently drag the saw back to get started. Now I'm cutting so that I can still see my line. I want to keep that line on the material to know that I've not gone too far. Every cut that we do should still be able to see the initial line that was drawn onto it. And you're trying, whenever you're cutting, to keep the saw as perpendicular as possible. It's at right angles to the material and going away from you at right angles. So it should say, 90 degrees to the floor and the bench and go away from you at 90 degrees. And what I'm doing as I go is I'm checking that I've cut to depth this side and this side. I'm not quite down there. I need to angle the saw a little bit away from myself. This one here. Let's get the next one. So cut so that my lines are just still on the material. So I've got that one cut to depth here and cut to depth here which is what we're looking for. You can still see the lines on. That's one of two methods. The second method is to use what's known as a cutting guide or cutting boards. You'll need chipboard, you'll need plywood, and you'll need a G-clamp. That line, I don't want to cut the line off. I want to cut inside the line. I should still be able to see it open. Cutting guide's secure, chipboard secure, material secure, and I can concentrate now, <clears throat> two hands on the saw, and drag it back and forth in order to cut down to depth. Just taking my time to check this edge and this edge, make sure that my material has not gone too far with my cutting. Last thing I can be doing to check that I've cut to depth is to take the flat end of my steel rule and put it into the joint and to check that I'm actually at the correct depth.